Hey everybody, it's Annette Green back again. It's been a little bit. Uh, I have been missing an action and I apologize for that, but I have been happily very busy uh, hosting, co-hosting the first annual Rocky Mountain Creative Retreat. So if you're a fan and you want to check it out, I am about to post a video in the next week or two, a uh, little recap of our time in Colorado, our creative time together, the projects that we made, and all kinds of fun photos and memories. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but today's video is all about catching up, catching up on your scrapbooking. Uh, I do not scrapbook in the traditional sense. I scrapbook in my planners. So if that's something that interests you, that's what this will be about today. So like many of you, I am very behind on my scrapbooking and I was trying to come up with a solution. I almost was just going to say, you know what, forget about 2021. I'm in the middle of the summer with my, my pages. Uh, as you have maybe seen in previous videos, uh, I have pretty much done a video on all of these pages. But so I'm way back here in the summer and I thought, well, oh, I, sh I should just stop and move on, go on to 2022. But I'm not going to do that. So I was going to offer you some suggestions today if you're in the same boat as me and you're really behind. So here's where I left off. It's fall time 2021 and rather than just giving up, I went to my phone, I picked about 20 pictures and I'm going to show you an alternative to do this very quickly. If you just can't stand that idea, <laughs> you can always do uh, another alternative and that is something like this which I have already done so far for 2022, I've kept up. You can do a regular planner. And if you know me by now, <clears throat> excuse me, you know that I offer these uh, printable planner pages in my Etsy shop. So I'll link that below. Of course, it's mid 2022 now, so 2023 isn't quite ready. But in these, I pick one photo for the whole month that sort of represents that month, something special that happened that month. And that is the only picture I put in here. That's an alternative for you. You know, maybe you don't have little kids anymore and not a lot of this things are happening. You don't have grandkids like me. Um, and maybe you don't go on a lot of trips. So you don't have a ton of photos to scrapbook. This is a great alternative, just one photo per month. So there's another option for you. Take you over to my computer and I'm gonna show you what I have done here. I've gone to my phone first and this is the photos program in a Macintosh computer. And I have just picked, uh, for now, I've picked 20 photos. Not all of these will make the cut. I'm just thinking about the highlights of the whole fall season. So as I get designing, one or two of these might get cut, maybe more, we'll see. But you can see, I take a look at all the pictures and I look for a color commonality. So there's a lot of sky blue in here, but there's also fall foliage, there's red, there's yellow, there's orange. So I'm going to I'm going to fall on the side of the more fall palette, which I think will be compatible with almost all these photos no problem. Okay, so I just went into the old craft stash and I do have this big bag full of fall papers. So let's take a peek at what I've got, see if this is going to work. This is Echo Park by Lori Whitlock. Uh, Celebrate Autumn. I think this is probably an older one. I'm looking for a date. Um, but you can see there's a lot of cute things in here. And there's stickers. And there's all kinds of stuff. So I think I'm going to stick with this. I think a lot of this will be fun for background papers. Now, what else have I got back here? It looks like I've got Hello Fall as another collection. But definitely will work together. So yeah, I think I'm going to stick with this. Look at this great background. All right, and the first thing that came to mind was to use the new pocket page protectors, I'm going to call them, um, by Elizabeth Craft Designs. There's different configurations here. Uh, I don't know how many I'll use yet. I may incorporate full pages yet, but this is, this is the solution when you are really behind because you can just pop your photos in here and a few accent pieces of paper, a little journaling card, and that page is done. I've shown you how I've used these in the past in a different video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a couple different configurations and play around and come up with a base plan 
and I'll be right back. Okay, what's great about these is, um, and not all paper collections come with them, but these are three by four, so they're perfect for the pocket pages. Instant embellishment, super quick. So the first thing that I would do is go through here and find the ones that I think that I'm most likely to use and get them cut out. Just super fast, don't even think about it. And uh, also keep in mind you have your little accent strip down here on some of your pattern papers. And those say cute little things like Hello Fall and little designs. So save those. Same with the sheet. Almost all papers have those now, those little accent strips on them. So that's one thing that makes it go faster. And then uh, I am going to use just two dies this time just to keep things simple. I have selected Planner Essentials 1 and this one actually goes over here. Planner Essentials 41, the rounded corner page. I'm going to mix and match and use some of the elements in here, but right away I've decided that if I do a full page, like where I left off in my planner before, so this was the front side and now we're here. Uh, this is just a little smaller than the actual page die, so it's a great fast little accent that you can add on there. I've grabbed one of those little strips. I'm going to pop it on there. Super easy. I've already selected my first 3 by 4 I put in the page protector, so I'm already rolling right along. Another tip to make this go really fast is, and you can't see it over there, but all on the floor to the left of me here, I have spread out all the sticker sheets. Uh, more of these 3x4s. The papers are kind of spread out, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. I'm just looking for the embellishment pieces to be quick, uh, easy access, and just kind of assess what I have over there. So that's always a good idea. All right, I think I have a plan, and let's see where we are here. Uh, so this was my first page I left off with, and what I have decided to do was have a solid page, a pocket page, a solid page, a pocket page, another solid page, and a pocket page. And because I'm starting to see how thick this is getting and I still have to get Christmas slash winter in here, uh, I'm going to try to challenge myself to fit everything in here, which means, yes, some of those photos are going to get cut, like I mentioned at the top. So all I've done here is put it into the book just to see how it's looking. We know everything's going to match, so we don't care. I just did two rounded pages, and I did, no, actually I did just the rounded accent on the, the page that was there. I did a rounded page from that Planner Essentials 41 page uh, protector, and then this was from the Planner Essentials 1. So 41 and 1, remember we're sticking with that. And I went ahead and cut this one out. I think it's going to go there. But I'm just getting a basic plan. This is how we get started. We don't try to, you know, figure it all out at the top. Um, just kind of work your way through it without too much care and thought. And it will probably work out for you. So we have a good start going here. I have cut out all these 3x4s and they're over here on the floor with my stickers so I can see everything. And um, as you can see, I'm not, I don't have photos out here yet. I don't have them sized or printed or anything yet because I just want to get a plan. Uh, I will take a peek over there and see, are there any that are really, really wide? But for the most part, I'm going to stick with squares and maybe a little bit tall photos. So that's kind of my next step. I'm going to go through the die here. Planner Essentials 1 has these nice frames. I can also use these rectangle pieces from this particular one in 41 as photo frames. So I'm just going to start making a little bit of a layout, not knowing what photos are going where. Alrighty, I've got a little start going here and I thought I would stop and show you a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I have die cut this using that Planner Essentials 41, the one that I showed you here earlier. Uh, something to note, of course, is uh, we can use these as photo mats, and I think I'll do two of them here. So I got these ready. But something to note is uh, when you use that die, you have you know have all this stuff left over. Like I just grabbed a chunk of this paper and I die cut it, so that's why it's cut off down here. But there's another whole bottom half to it. Uh, which has that in it. So, I mean, these pieces are extra. I'm certainly not going to throw them away. I'm going to use this as a photo mat in a minute. I can use this on the side of something like a little tab. So put those to use. 
And then um, I'm going to stop with this page, even though I am certainly not done. But for now, just to get that base done and move forward, it really feels like I'm accomplishing something and I'm, I'm moving quickly. Uh, the whole reinforcers will come later once I decide for sure what else is going to happen on the page. And of course, I picked Planner Essentials 1 because it has just those regular six whole reinforcers circles on there and all these other goodies. So we're going to add those later. But now moving to the next page, which would be my little clear pocket page. And we pop this in here and, and yeah, you can just leave it like that, but I want to do more. And it's, it's kind of floating loose in there because you can really fit something a little larger than three by four. So three and an eighth by four and an eighth matted around that. Of course, there's a little bit of a busy background on here, which I probably will cover up, but that looks a lot nicer, and especially when it's in there, it's going to be nice and snug. So I'll get this on here. And so on the back of there, I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking, okay, this page will go here. We'll see through to that. We don't want too much of this plaid red here. Just let's put some more of that gold. And then we can always add an accent, a tab, something with that. But I think it's just too much. And maybe you agree. So that would go in there. But rather than just putting that in there and having this on the back again, I want to back these. So instead of seeing this very busy print on the back side, I'm going to adhere this to, the, say, the bottom one, which is this guy. And then I'm going to put some of this orange and white polka dot on the back of this guy so that when I go to use this little frame, and maybe that doesn't stand out enough. We'll see. Of course, I'm going to have something in here. Uh, maybe we want a lighter color. I think I'm going to change that up. This is going to look a lot better. We can see that it stands out so much better now. Uh, I did round the corners off of this because they were just kind of squared off and I wanted them to match the top. That's just a little detail. And then this one is in the bottom with that orange and white polka dots. So this will eventually go in this way. And then we will see this through the top half. So I got to get these adhered and then I'll get them in there. And I can tell you right now, this is a nice snug fit. And then especially when we get a photo on there, see how it's not super loose anymore. And it's a nice snug fit. I hate it when I flip through a scrapbook and pictures actually slide right out of these. So this is a good solution to keep them in there really tight. Okay, so that's how that looks. Really cute. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I did use this different, uh, the bottom part of that one die to make a photo mat here. And you can see I'm purposely off center so that I can use a sticker or some embellishment down there. It's just a split second decision I just made. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to pop that in. And now we have this page and I've already stuck this on the back because I had it and it was done. So we have this nice page and I'm already thinking about two photos and a little journaling place. So I went to the die set and again we are back to Planner Essentials 1 and I cut out that larger of the two photo frame squares and the beauty of a frame die like this being a frame and then an inner part is that you get dual duty out of that particular die and so what of course I mean is now you have this for another page right so the insides of course that came out of there and that came out of there and so just switch them up and now you've got four photo frames all right so I'm thinking on this page I'm gonna put these aside for another page and for this one not sure yet exactly where but I'm just getting uh, the idea that I want two and then a journaling place and and yes I could go to this little smaller square die and make that a journaling place but it's too many squares don't you think I think we need to soften up those squares a little bit so I went to one of those three by four cards and I just didn't even fussy fussy cut this over here um, as you can see I just loosely cut around that detail area I didn't want to cut all those little leaves out 
but this blank space here will be a great cute little place to journal and it's always nice to overlap things as I say all the time in my videos so I'm thinking along those lines so I'm going to get that on the page I want to leave myself a little room for page prote uh, hole protectors hole reinforcers <laughs> and then my two photos here and then this leaves me some room for embellishment or some fun stuff later okay uh, one more thing I thought about and I'm not sure that it will make the cut on this particular page remember how I said save things like this uh, perhaps perhaps so that this isn't so perfectly symmetrical hmm we can put this over here as a cute little accent and then of course I saved that little guy from the previous one don't throw anything away this is how things happen quickly you save all those little pieces and then you find economical ways to use the extras so this is looking kind of cute I'm not sure yet I'm not going to stick it down but I might take a quick photo of that and then move those pieces out of the way and just keep moving forward that's also something that I do you know what I decided uh, I'm going to commit so what I did is I pulled my page over that I had previously, the one that I know is going to be opposing it. And I thought, you know, with everything in a line, these are already in a line and then these are in a line. It's a little bit of a square, kind of boring. So to keep the eye moving and interested, this is just one of those design things, you know, if you even care. But I do, I like to make things as pleasing as possible. So I've decided I want the photos to be a little bit opposing each other here. And then this little journaling block will tilt on its side rather than being straight. And it adds just a little bit of fun and whimsy. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And then, of course, we have these little open places. We're not going to worry about those yet. Okay, here we are. And I did a little bit of work off camera. So I have this page ready for now. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to embellish till later, but I just, I just thought I would use that. That was one of the... I think three by fours and I just cut it out around the edge and I think I'm going to add that there but for now we'll leave it up there and I have this little page complete as well this is the page protector that has the two um, squares and so my paper measures back here four and an eighth by four and an eighth for each of these and I backed them with a different paper because the back side was like not good uh, not good for my purposes so I have used this little accent here, just popped it on there for now. I'm sure more is going to go on here, but you can see that I have utilized those elements that I put aside earlier. Like I said, you know, dual duty kind of things. And so now I'm back here. I have not decided what's going to happen here exactly just yet. Uh, I have some things laying here that I was thinking about. And again, leftover stuff from before that I just put aside. So that may go there. And then we've got this one that I saved the frame to that might go there. Okay, that's fine. We'll let that go for a minute. And then I went ahead and I did this little accent piece. This is in uh, the Planner Essentials 41. Little die like this has several parts to it. And as you can see, just like before, save the opposing parts and you can use this again somewhere else. I did put a little yellow behind it because it's going to go on this page probably and it really needed to stand out. This is a 3x4 so I rounded the bottom corners and I just used a large circle punch and it's going to become a little journaling pocket on this page. So everything's coming together pretty nicely. Now this would be the back but it's a little busy so I'm going to put this on here. So let's pretend that's done. And as you can see over here, I've started to fill out my last pocket page, which has a four and an eighth by a three and an eighth rectangle here and here. And then these are two by two. And of course, I'm talking in inches. And then this is on the back. You know, we're not going to worry about this because this might be the lead into Christmas pages. And I can always put red here and there's already green here. So it's awesome. Uh, so my idea I'm having over here I went ahead and cut a couple of those little frames uh, this uh, yeah it's all from the same collection I've got a little burlap looking 
inside and that little floral dark brown outside. Then I found a page in the papers over there that had big square cut aparts like this. And these were the same size, but I wanted to have that same brown kind of grounding the outside edge. And it just says gather, so I'm going to cover that up with this one so I have a place to journal. That'll probably go there. And the only die I haven't used in both of those sets is this great number string. So I was thinking I could work them in for absolutely no purpose but design somewhere on this page. Maybe kind of back here. So that's still in the works. And then I pulled a couple of little journaling tags that we can add somewhere. I went ahead and made this little tag embellishment with the die. Uh, also this little fold over with some stickers from the collection. So I have a couple of things laying around here that I want to start using. But as you can see, I really kind of have all my photo areas determined at this point. And I can now go to the printer and decide who's going to go where, size them up, and then print them all on one sheet. And as I show in a lot of my videos, I size all my photos. I decide by sitting in front of my computer what photos are going to go where now, and I measure in inches what I need and I kind of label you know what the picture is and then I go into Photoshop and I pull in my photos all on an eight and a half by eleven now I had so many photos that I had to go to a second sheet here uh, but you can see all the different sizes I can get them all sized just how I want them and then I just have to go with my craft knife and a ruler and cut everything out and get it on the pages which is the next step here so as you can see, I've got my pages ready to go. I've added a couple of things I had laying off to the side. I went ahead and made a little journaling tag for here, which I will dress up a little bit with some twine and a hole reinforcer, but just got that planned out and ready. And I shouldn't be taking these off because I'm supposed to be knowing where they go. <laughs> All right, let me figure it out. Alrighty, I'm just getting my last few photos on here. And you'll see I am working over here on a nice clean sheet of paper. Oftentimes I get a little glue and remnants of tape runner on my glass mat and they inev inevitably end up on my the fronts of my photos. Okay, so let's flip back to the beginning. Got all my photos in place. I'll just show you very quickly. And you may notice that I have rounded the corners on all my photos because all of these photo mats, except for those last two you just saw me glue down, are rounded corner frames. So I use my trusty little Katamaru Pro that I'm always using and always talking about to round the corners of my photos before I stick them down. So I've got everything ready and it's looking good. Now I just have to go and embellish everything. All right, everybody, I am finished. I have completed all the embellishing of my pages. So I thought I'd flip through very quickly and show you what I've done. Uh, of course, I've used some die cuts for embellishment, some other die cuts for journaling here stickers of course i did my whole reinforcers on some of the pages but not all uh, of course journaling here and the little side tab with a heart sticker on both sides makes that a little easier to flip um, stickers a little bit of journaling but stickers go a long way very quick embellishment uh, whole reinforcers again stickers and this cute little journaling place we talked about i left this blank so that when you flip this that lands right in the middle Again, with the stickers and some cut aparts from the paper, a little bit of journaling, and you know, this page is done. Very simple. And these stickers are very white around the outside edge, so you might notice that I have inked the edges with a little bit of a vintage photo brown. And this is how it looks. I'm very happy with it. It was very easy to get a whole lot of pages done in a mere afternoon. Here's my little journaling tag. I'm not usually a cutesy kind of scrapbooking person, but it doesn't 
it doesn't bother me. I didn't use too busy of patterns in the paper. Um, and I think it's sweet. I think it's sweet for the fall time and Thanksgiving season. Um, very fun, very fun and easy to do. So just to recap, if you want to get a whole bunch of pages done in a short amount of time, the key is use your dies, find some shortcut things like three by four cards, journaling cards, things that are already prepared. Stickers, of course, are awesome, instant embellishment. But just work your way through little by little and each time you work your way through, add a little more and a little more, like I did. So you get your pages done, then you start thinking about your photos, and then you start thinking about what kind of embellishment and journaling. So it doesn't all have to be done in one step for one page. So that helped me go a lot faster. And I hope that that helps you. I hope that inspires you in some way. I hope you like it. I hope you try it. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you very soon in the next video.